Hi everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Now when you go out to buy a power sports machine, it is easy to go to the dealership, drop off a big bag of money and get something brand new like this Yamaha Viper right here. But you know what? It's not always practical. We don't all have big bags of money, right? So in this video, I want to talk to you about the differences buying a brand new sled versus a lightly used sled versus a very used sled. And yes, we actually own all of these, so we'll tell you what it's like to own, how much they cost, and all the details. Let's get into it. start with the new sled. Now this might seem very obvious, but it has to be said. If you buy something brand new, it's going to work. And hey, if it doesn't, you have a warranty, so the dealer will fix it for you. That is easily the biggest advantage of buying new. Plus you also get, you know, the latest technology on the market. You can just look at the suspension on this Yamaha versus the suspension on those skidoos to see an example of how snowmobiles are really evolving. Um, but again, not everybody has money to afford something like this. So now let's go look at my Skidoo Grand Tour and I'll get this one out of the way. Now we are on to my own personal sled. So this is a 2016 Skidoo Grand Touring 1200 four-stroke. And of course it's a two-up. The Grand Touring is a big couch of a sled. Now I have some really young babies. They're still too young to fit on here, but one day they won't be. So that's why I went with this big two-up. Plus, you know what? I'm a big dude. So having all this space plus all this suspension back here is actually really nice. Um, the only issues I've actually really had with this sled are battery issues. And that comes along with any used snowmobile. But there's a difference on this 1200 E-Tech. It depends on the battery. It cannot run without the battery. Plus, there's no pull start here. Now, pulling over a 1200 four stroke would be pretty tough, to be fair, but I didn't actually know that when I bought the sled. I, I was a little surprised. I probably should have done my research, but that's something you should look out for. If you want that simple pull start, some big four strokes like this one, you don't get it. But you know what? Battery issues aren't that big a deal. Just buy a new battery, which is what I did. I stuck it in there. I have 10,000 kilometers on this sled. It's never been rebuilt. That's another advantage of four stroke. If it was a two stroke, yeah, it probably would be looking at a rebuild by now. Um, I've been really happy with it. She rides nice and she pulls strong. This 1200 has loads of power. How'd you pay for it? Oh, good call. You know what? I actually got this thing for a pretty dang good deal. $8,000 Canadian. Um, brand new. You're talking over 10, close to 15 actually. So that's the advantage of going with something a couple years older. You're going to save that money. You deal with a couple issues, but in my books, it's been totally worth it so far. Now, uh... Mac can show you his quick little skidoo over there. Hi everybody. So here is my 2016 Skidoo 600 MXZ Renegade Sport. And it's a mouthful because it came as a special edition package in that year. And I specifically looked for it because it was the longer track suspension, 137 inch track, and it came with the two up seat. Now, I also have a young growing family and I know down the road I'll need the two-up seat, but currently this is removable so I get to look cool still for a few more years. And in th with that in mind, this sled is basic. It's light, it's a 600, it's got plenty of jam. And when I picked this one up, it had less than a 1500 kilometers on it. It had 1450 to be exact. And I've put a couple hundred on it since, but the nice thing about buying that is I had nothing to worry about. No rebuilds, still all the OEM parts. There was very little to look at and I paid about seven grand. So, which is fairly under market for this sled, but I got a hell of a deal. I've had no issues and I've had a ton of fun. Is but it a four stroke? mine is a two stroke, so I definitely have to get the injection oil in there with the fuel, but that's a small price to pay for the amount of jam I get out of the hole. Now, in the sense when you're looking for a used sled, I'm going to show you a few things to look for, a few things to ask about, and really to observe before you buy anything. So picture yourself as the prospective buyer of this 20-year-old Skidoo Grand Touring. So you've shown up in the backyard, and I'm here to show you this sled. 
what are a few things for you to look for, despite what I tell you. A couple of things on the older sleds you wanna definitely observe, get the hood open, have a look underneath. You're definitely looking for any type of fire damage, definitely fluid leaks. You wanna have a look at your oil reservoirs, your fuel tanks, a couple of your lines, any telltales of some type of failure down the trail. Beyond that, if accessible, you should ask the guy selling it to show you a compression test, or if you can have access to the tools, bring it yourself and do it yourself. Make sure that your compression is running anywhere. Every sled's a little different. I'm gonna say ballpark 130 to 150. You wanna see on these sleds is as close to new as you can get. A little under, okay, but definitely keep in mind, hey, this could be a problem down the road. Now, moving out from under the hood, have an overall look here. I mean, you might get into the cockpit area and find a bunch of weird wires hanging in there because somebody had a GPS wired in or somebody had a heated visor wired in. Not necessarily an issue if it was done properly, but something to consider and go, oh, somebody might have cut and spliced, this might be a problem. Just definitely take all these things into consideration, especially when you're negotiating. I mean, I negotiate hard, so definitely have all your ducks in a row. Back here, you wanna check your suspension out. You wanna look at your track condition. Make sure you don't have too many lugs missing. All your wheels are there, all the covers are there. If possible, you wanna take it around the you know backyard or the trail, if you will, listen for any bearings out of it or anything like that. Also in here you have sliders, and now this is a wearable component in the track. It's tough to see, but you can usually see from the side and kind of gauge the thickness of them. They're not expensive to replace, but again, something to look for. Has he been running? No sliders on this thing, and the track right on the frame. Is the frame worn out? All things to consider. The only other wearable components, back up here in the front, you wanna have a look at your suspension components. Kind of shake the machine a little bit, see if any of the bushings move, see, make sure the shocks have all the oil in it. Just again, visual checks. And then the skis. You're looking for things like stress cracks in the plastic. And if possible, I would even come so far as to lift this up and have a look underneath at your carbides and make sure that A, they're there, and B, that they're not completely worn out. Now again, all things that can be replaced, but definitely a series of factors to consider when purchasing a used sled. So we're gonna take a look at my sleds, starting off with this. This is a 2002 Arctic Cat Pantera. This is a Grand Touring couch sled, if you will. And it's a 600, two stroke. I bought this about 10 years ago. So even at that point, it was already an eight year old machine. And I was purposely looking for something like this because unlike when I was 25 years old, I still like to get out and ride, but not as fast and not as often. So quite honestly, this works for me really well. That is one of the things that you wanna look at if you're going out to get an older sled is that the two strokes, honestly, because they're so greasy, they don't rust, they last a very long time. And there's a simplicity to this sled. Also, the prices are lower than a lot of the new four-stroke stuff. I paid $2,200 for this Good. 10 years ago. And to be quite honest, with the price of used sleds today, because of the pandemic, everybody seems to be buying things, I'll bet you I could get that for this sled today. One of the things that you don't necessarily need to give up, because even with a sled that's 20 years old, I've got reverse, I've got electric start, uh, I got heated grips, and honestly, the main difference between today's sleds and this one is the riding architecture. So the suspension that's on here, as well as the front end. But for my purposes, like I said, I'm not an Olympic snowmobiler. This works for me just fine. My wife and I, we're out on the trail, we're having a good time, and for the little bit that I'm doing, it's fine. Now, if you are going out to look at one of these things, the first thing you wanna do is check that odometer. Everything's got one. And frankly, that's what you're gonna find. There are low mileage sleds because you might run into some old bugger like me who goes out and rides three, 400 miles a year. And the rest of the time, that's the thing with snowmobiles. Who cares it's 20 years old? This thing for 10 months of the year sits in the barn. So let's take a look at my wife's sled which is actually the oldest of the bunch. This is a 2001 Ski-Doo Grand Touring, and this is a 500 Twin, again, two-stroke. However, at this end of the market, has reverse, has electric start. Frankly, Tracy said she wouldn't 
ride a sled didn't have reverse or electric start. And we found this, this was a very, very low kilometer sled. Even today, this is 20 years old, it's only got 3,400 kilometers on it. So these things do exist. You can get out there and get them. The main things that go bad on these sleds are rubberized components, okay? Whatever the different air vents and connectors between carburetors and various other things like that under the hood. And then of course, sliders, carbides, some of the bearings. If you really find something that's been sitting a long time, but you think it's a good deal, sometimes it's worth buying it, taking it right to the shop and just getting the mechanic to replace all the wear parts. This Skidoo actually has had next to no problems whatsoever. The battery today on it is a little bit weak, but that is my only real problem with it. Now, it minus 20 last night, so it's fair. Yeah, so now on the Arctic Cat, and we'll fire that up in a minute and you'll see, it with these two strokes, particularly the cats, they are so dirty. They burn so much oil that under that hood, I was getting a tremendous amount of splatter and residue, so much so that one day I was wailing down a rail trail and I looked down and I had flame shooting out of the side and it's not the kind of thing where you went, ooh, that looks cool. No, the damn thing was on fire because so much oil had accumulated underneath the muffler that, yeah, anyway, we got it off to the side of the trail, threw about a ton of snow on it. And the amazing thing is, is that after I put the fire out, we cleaned it out, it fired right back up and I drove it home. It's actually amazing. I can show you guys the damage, a bit of melted plastic, but uh, yeah, it's pretty incredible. And I think you chalk it up to just a basic engine and it uh, doesn't take much to get that thing running. And that's one <laughs> of the things, even if you're not super mechanical, these things are pretty easy. And most of the components, I mean, these things have been being built now, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. They're really, really well put together. So you've seen a real variety of sleds here today. Everything from 20 years old to brand new. So what does it come down to? If you'd like to get out on the trails, I mean, obviously, how much money have you got to spend? But the other thing with snowmobiles, as is true for so many power sports, is a machine like this ends up sitting 10 months of the year. So do you want to have two grand sitting in the barn 10 months of the year or do you want 15 grand sitting for 10 months of the year i mean this is kind of one of the things that i throw up and i feel a lot better about this and the amount of usage that i get out of these honestly when we do this again in 10 years i'll show you these sleds once again so anyway that's it for this one folks all right make sure you go below hit like hit subscribe please join the channel and then come back to see what we're testing at truck king soon I'm going to leave now and you'll get to see how much smoke comes out of this thing. Video assistant. Just supposed to try audio today. The old guy can't start his sled. Right.